Okay, Klein. Now we're in this portion of your video clinic because we live in the future. Uh, we are only going to discuss a few things. Uh, the actual sample kit for uh, climbing shoes are out on the road with Jared right now while he's down in Florida visiting a bunch of gyms and accounts. Uh, so we're kind of limited. Right, there are a lot of cool things that come out this spring and probably the biggest thing that uh, we're uh, going to see changing in our marketplace for Scarpa is going to be that there's an update to the origin. Now the origin is Scarpa's entry level shoe. Um, and when we talk about entry level shoes, uh, what we mean is, is the shoe is not very aggressive. It doesn't have a lot of downturn. There's not a lot of asymmetry to the last. Uh, it's a very flat shoe. It's a very comfortable shoe. Um, climbing shoes aren't comfortable. I mean, they can be, there's comfortable for a climbing shoe, but there's not really comfortable climbing shoes. Uh, that being said, this is really as close as you're going to be able to get. We added 1.3 millimeter to the forefoot of this shoe so that the toes can spread out just a little bit more, make them a little bit more comfortable. Um, and then we went to the PAF heel system. And traditionally, climbing shoes have one piece of rubber that goes around the back of the shoe to create what they call like a slingshot ran. And the PAF is really interesting because when a shoe is uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable usually in two spaces. It's uncomfortable to the front of the foot and the toes, and then it's uncomfortable on the Achilles because these are the two tightest spots for a climbing shoe. Well, the PAF kind of fixes that problem by being a three-piece heel system. You have one piece of ran that comes through here, one piece of ran that comes through here, and then it's closed in by this. Now, the way that it's tensioned, you still have a nice tight fit on the Achilles, but it doesn't dig in quite as strongly as it used to, making the shoe really comfortable and really approachable for beginner climbers. Uh, this is the only price point shoe on the market that's built in Europe. Everything else is built in Asia, and a lot of that stuff is outsourced. So there's a lot of quality that goes into this, even down to like our price point shoes. So it's really cool. Uh, there's some new graphics and stylings that are coming out. Uh, the shoe just looks a little fresher, looks a little nicer. Um, you know, we think it's a great update on the shoe for 2020. Also new for this season, you'll have to excuse the chalk on this thing. I've been testing it out, trying to see what I think because I was such a big fan of the Booster S, which was the shoe that came before this. The Booster S isn't around anymore. It went away this spring. So if you are a fan of the Booster S, I recommend getting online, going to some retailers, doing whatever you can do to find somebody who's got some Booster S's left and maybe putting a pair in the closet. Now, that being said, I love the Booster S. I was a little sad to see it change, but I've put some time in this shoe this spring and I can tell you that it's not a bummer at all. The Booster is a phenomenal update to an already phenomenal shoe. It's still built on that FZ Lash. Now, if anybody understands Scarpa, we have so many different lasts. And when we say last, it's literally like a model of a foot no toes, uh, but and it's something that it, the climbing shoe is actually built on to give it its shape. Now, while we have, I wanna say 17 different lasts that we use throughout the range, we have one last that a lot of people don't realize is uh, maybe their favorite last, and that's the FZ last. And that's the last you're gonna see on the Drago, the Booster, the Boostick, the Furia, uh, the Mago, any of those wildly downturned, super asymmetric shoes are gonna be built on that FZ last. And that is the story with the new Booster. So just like the old Booster S, built on the FZ last, super asymmetric, super downturned, but with a lot of really cool updates. One of those updates is like we talked about in the origin, uh, this does have the PAF heel system. So super comfy on the heel. Uh, they've added this piece of rubber in the heel uh, which is really cool because it almost acts as an edging tool on certain types of heel hooks. Um, and then we still have the, the tri-tension uh, tri tri randing under the foot that we've had before, but we've added these perforation holes here to make the, fourth or the middle of the foot uh, even softer. On top of that, we also added some holes inside of the perforations underneath the forefoot to make the front end of this shoe softer. So it is a softer version of the Booster S, which was already a pretty soft shoe to begin with. Similar midsole, similar everything else as far as that goes. 
Just these perforations added in a few key spots making this shoe softer. Um, the, the way that this shoe fits underneath the middle of the foot in the arch is unbelievable and that's partly due to the closure system. When you pull this top piece of Velcro down, it really grabs hold of this and it's stitched into this part of the randing. And when you tighten that down, it really sucks the shoe up under the foot, giving you a really good feeling under the toe. If I had any comments about this shoe, the heel is a little baggy for me. If I were to be trying something that was really, really heel hook dependent, I would stick with the Classic Instinct uh, because that heel is by far the best. Uh, but the forefoot of this shoe is wicked precise. It's very soft and I'm really excited about the updates to the booster. Um, oh, and another thing to add, uh, you know, if you have a climbing shoe around for a long time, say you've gone through a couple resoles, Sometimes you'll see some damage and some wear come to the Velcro closure. Scarpa went as far as to add the ceramic dots, which actually add abrasion resistance to that closure system to keep it from wearing out over time. So another really cool update to the Booster S. So like I said earlier, Jared has the demo kit with him and we've only got a few pair of shoes here to talk about. But I thought while we have your attention and we have this moment, um, we would talk about the Instinct family real fast. While now that there are three viable Instinct models on the market, it might be a little confusing as to which one you want to buy, which one's right for you. And so maybe we can help you guys figure that out right now and give you that information to share with people in your shop. So, we have the classic Instinct VS. We have the Instinct VSR. And now we have the women's instincts. So three instincts to choose from. And even though that one of them is gender specific now, it's not that cut and dry. Maybe the women's does work for you because of volume and things like that. And we'll get into that. So the traditional instinct, this has actually become Scarpa's best selling performance shoe. And partly because uh, it fits such a good range of feet. It's kind of wide in the forefoot, not super narrow. Uh, it has one of the best fitting heels anybody has ever put their foot in in the market. Uh, this thing just fits such a large range of heels and it's, it's amazing how well it works out. And I think partly do, uh, when you say Instinct VS, the V stands for Velcro and the S stands for slipper. So the shoe, if you take away the Velcro closure, really is a slipper type construction, which I think allows the shoe to really fit and form to a whole lot of different types of feet. So a few years ago when the Instinct VSR came out, a lot of people thought, well, that's a lower volume or a female version of the shoe, but that's not true. When we talk about volume in a shoe, if I were to fill this shoe up with water to, this, to a certain mark, to the, right to the top of the heel cup, and then fill this shoe up with water right to the heel cup, pour that water out, it will hold the same amount of water. Now, if we came into the women's shoe, and filled that up with water to the same spot, size 37 in each shoe, and poured that water out, there'd be less water in here because there's less volume. There's literally less space inside of this shoe. Same distance heel to toe as the other, right? They're both a 37, but the volume in that side, and the actual space inside this shoe is less. So VS, VSR, exact same volume, exact same upper, exact same last. The main difference between here is that you're going to see that this has Vibram XS Edge, this has Vibram XS Grip. Now there's a fun backstory here. Uh, if you're a rock climber, I'm sure you've heard of Alex Puccio. She's super small, super strong, and this was her favorite fitting shoe from Scarpa. However, with her super light weight, the XS Edge was just a little too stiff for her. Whenever she was climbing super hard boulders, super small feet, she couldn't quite feel the rock as much as she would like to under the shoe, and the shoe felt a little too stiff. So, when she would get her brand new Scarpas, she wouldn't even take them out of the box. They would essentially go straight to the resoler, and they would get resold with excess grip. So, this shoe was essentially Alex Puccio's, like, uh, Franken shoe that she would have built. Well, word got around to Scarpa that, you know, what she was doing, it also made sense. Some people were having their shoes resold and gripped, so the VSR came out. Now, when you, we were talking about the VS stands for Velcro Slipper, the R literally just means like, not actually racing, but when you look in the racing world or motorcycles, whenever there's an R after something, it means it's a little bit more badass. 
a little faster, and that's why there's an R on the back side of VSR. Um, but that being said, exact same volume. Moving forward, this shoe was originally only, or sorry, originally this shoe was only built up to a 42. Now this shoe is actually going to be built up to a 46 so that, uh, because this has been a very popular style of the Instinct for men. This fall, we finally saw the release of the Instinct Women's. Now this is actually a lower volume version of the VS and VSR. Because a lot of this, this shoe is predominantly built for women, we will see that the shoe will have excess grip on it. That softer rubber compound is going to work better with that lighter weight, it's going to be a little bit more responsive, and it's going to be a little bit more sensitive underfoot. Now, just because this is a women specific model, doesn't necessarily mean we'll only see women wearing it. We're starting to see a lot of guys out there in the gyms wearing this shoe just because Scarpa typically has a wider forefoot and a narrow heel. So this shoe is going to work out quite well for those guys who have a lower volume foot. And if that low volume foot has uh, gotten in the way of you trying other pairs of Scarpas, just know that there's going to be a low volume Drago coming out in fall of 2020. And that's kind of a quick overview over the Instinct family. While we're here, some of you guys may have seen this thing and you don't know much about it. Um, and it is also just one of the other shoes out of my wife's uh, uh, quiver uh, that I could have to pull out to talk to you guys about. But that's gonna be the Furia Air. So this thing dropped this fall and there's been a little bit of buzz about it and we wanna take a second just to talk to you guys. The Furia Air is the lightest shoe ever constructed a uh, climbing shoe ever constructed. And this thing is insanely soft. And when we talk about soft, it is like a rubber sock. Um, it is built on that same FZ last as the Booster and the Drago and the Chimera and all those guys. But this thing has a super, super lightweight synthetic upper. It is a full vegan shoe. There's no leather anywhere on the inside of it. And there's zero midsole in this. And then when we talk about midsole, you know, typically there's a piece of plastic in almost every climbing shoe that either runs from the toe to the heel or just under the forefoot. The midsole in this shoe is essentially a guitar pick. Um, just imagine about that size and about that thickness of plastic that lives under the toe, and that's it. Other than that, this thing's full of perforations to make this the softest climbing shoe that's ever been built. Uh, just another cool little fun fact about this, when I say the shoe is vegan, even shoes that have synthetic uppers oftentimes have leather uh, insoles inside the shoe. That leather provides a lot of good friction, a lot of durability. It helps your foot stick to the bottom of the shoe. Doesn't, your toes don't want to move around on that leather. Leather would have been too heavy for this and would have taken away some of the flexibility. So what they decided to use under the toe pad here so that your foot can actually uh, maintain some friction with the bottom of the shoe is this material called Alcantara. Uh, another popular place that you'll find Alcantara is in Formula One race car seats. Uh, the material is so grippy, it is, uh, it's what they use to keep the drivers, as they're doing these super fast turns, they're not slipping around and sliding in their seats very much. So uh, if you happen to grab a pair of Furias, uh, just know that your toes, uh, your manky climbing toes, are resting on the same material that F1 uh, drivers uh, rest their backs in while they're going a million miles an hour. So cool fact there. And that's a pretty good overview on climbing shoes. Um, we'll probably put something together uh, once we track Jared down, whenever he makes it back out of Florida, and maybe we'll stick him in front of the camera and make him tell you about the rest of the range and some shoes you might be interested in. Thanks.